so now I'm actually going to go over two different use cases uh, that might be applicable to some of the research that you may be conducting. And then we're going to um, let you guys start exploring screen. We have a few exercises that you can uh, download from the ASHG tab on screen if you want to try to work through those. Um, also, we're free to answer any questions that you may have um, applicable to your individual research questions as well. Um, so this is the first case, and this is actually a recent uh, publication uh, that came out in April. And this is um, a group that identified new candidate genes for autism spectrum disorder through whole genome sequencing. So these are rare, um, uh, rare genetic variants that they've identified, um, and they've identified new genes that tend to be near or contain these variants. One of interest um, that they reported at 18 was a Myo5A. And so this is one of the uh, myosin-5 heavy chain genes. So it belongs to this uh, larger superfamily of myosin genes. And if you kind of remember back to basic biology, myosin is one of these uh, motor proteins uh, that's involved in transport in cells. So at first glance, this doesn't seem to be necessarily a gene that you know, it's intrinsically uh, would be linked with autism. So it's something that we may want to be exploring more to see what sort of cell types express this gene um, and additional information such as that. So you can actually use screen to investigate uh, gene expression. So if we go to screen here, you can search in the search box for this gene, the Myo5A. You can see there's actually autocomplete options as well. So we can search for this gene in human. And when we search for this gene, it's going to return CREs that are nearby this gene, as well as give you these tabs to investigate uh, gene expression through RNA-seq data and RAMPage data. So if we actually look at the expression of this gene, we see it's expressed in a lot of different cell and tissue types. Um, we can change here the scale to uh, TPM. The top one actually, though, is in um, this type of um, a brain neuron cell. So this is specifically for the... Um, GABA pathway uh, specific neuron. However, it's also expressed in a lot of other human adult tissues. We can look at, for example, rampage data as well. So this is going to be capturing the five prime end of transcripts. So it may um, be capturing, for example, RNAs that may be degraded over time or can't be captured by traditional RNA-seq. And here we have uh, the data for all the different uh, transcription start sites for this gene. We can scroll through them. We see this top one here is, um, has really high expression in neural cells. And then some of these other transcripts, for example, are also expressed uh, at much lower levels, but at some level in um, brain tissue. So it seems to be there's definitely some sort of neural role for this gene, um, but it's a little bit difficult to see just using the human data. So what's great about uh, screen is it also incorporates all of the mouse data. So we can search, uh, for example, for a CRE um, of interest here. So this would be, for example, promoter-like CRE. It has really high H3K4 me3 and it's proximal to the gene. So we can click this CRE. We see that it has high activity once again in neural cells, but also other cell types. And we can actually go over to mouse to see if there's an orthologous mouse CRE and there is. So if we click this CRE, I'll bring us down to the mouse page and we see that we, it's uh, at the promoter of the orthologous mouse gene, uh, Myo5a. This time, if we look at gene expression, we have a little bit of a different pattern. So as Ji Ping had mentioned before, we have this uh, nice matrix of um, embryonic mouse data, and we can see in addition to some blood cells, we have high, really high expression in embryonic mouse brain tissue. So it seems that um, the expression of this gene, in addition to other cell types, is really high during brain development. Um, and so what we can do is explore this further by using the uh, Differential Gene Expression app, which is this delta uh, symbol here that Michael showed before. So you can actually pick different uh, tissue types to look at the expression for this gene. Uh, so for example here, if we're interested maybe in midbrain, um, we have, for example, from uh, time point 11.5 um, all the way to birth. So we can select uh, E11.5. And we can go all the way, for example, we'll go halfway to 14.5. So if we scroll down here, we see that this gene, uh, Myo5a, actually increases expression over uh, brain development. And we can see it corresponds to increased activity in these promoter-like CREs here, 
as well as these more distal enhancer-like CREs. So even just by looking at initial human gene expression, we couldn't get the whole picture for what this gene might be doing. It seems by incorporating the mouse uh, data as well, we can maybe try to figure out a role for uh, this gene in autism. And but more importantly, it, it um, is able to, it enables you to develop hypotheses for all these results. So if you have a list of maybe 50 genes, you want to prioritize actually testing some of these in one of your uh, model organisms, you can actually use screen to try to prioritize which ones you want to test. So that's sort of at the gene level of one use case. And this is a, another use case um, looking at uh, GWAS variants. So this is a bit of an older study uh, from 2010. And this study was looking at uh, the relationship between uh, human genetic variants and levels of cholesterol. So this particular study we've imported into screen already. We'll go back to the main page here. So here we can find this study by actually just searching uh, cholesterol. And we have a whole bunch of actually studies here that have uh, measured different levels of cholesterol. This one here is the Teslovich study. So what we have here are recommended cell types to investigate. And this is based on enrichment of GWAS SNPs compared to a background. And if we look here, we can see the most significant ones are all from liver. So we have the right lobe of female liver here, an adult liver um, from Roadmap, Hep G2, which is a liver uh, cell line. So we can click one of these, and it will give us all the uh, CREs that overlap a SNP, as well as are active in uh, liver. And you can sort these as well. And so you can actually start to try to investigate uh, individual SNPs that may be causal based on uh, overlapping epigenomic data. And this is an example of one here. So this is a, a distal a CRE with the D symbol, but it has high uh, DNA signal and high H3K27A signal in liver. So if we click this CRE, we now are brought to the CRE details page. We can start investigating it further. We see overall the CRE itself has very high uh, signal in liver tissue, so liver here, right lobe, as well as intestinal tissue. It also has really high DNA in uh, colon. We can actually look at intersecting transcription factors as well. And what's interesting is a lot of these factors are um, almost exclusive to the liver. So for example, a FOXA1 here, if we click, we get brought to a factor book. Um, we can see that in its title, it's actually a hepatocyte nuclear factor, but it's also a transcriptional activator for liver-specific transcripts. Um, additionally, even in the uh, more um, ubiquitous uh, transcription factors, we can see that all of the experiments are done in liver. So this is a very liver-centric um, candidate regulatory element. Um, if we look at associated gene expression, we can see, once again, we have really high expression in liver. And this is nice because not all the cell types are the same between gene expression data and CRE data, just based on what's surveyed and ENCODE. So it's usually another a validation. We also have rampage signal, once again, very high in liver. Um, this particular CRE also has an orthologous CRE in mouse, which you can uh, click and see. And no surprise here, it's also active in liver. So it's nice that you can use both the human and the mouse data together uh, to further uh, validate your results. What's interesting, I'm just going to go here to this last tab. It's called link genes. So we've been really trying to work on um, linking distal regulatory elements with their potential target genes. And this is what we've incorporated so far, which is um, uh, 3D chromatin uh, links uh, through chia pet data, as well as genetic links um, through EQTLs, primarily from GTEx. So here we actually can see that this CRE has a SNP that is uh, linked with this ABCG8 gene. But we also have supporting chia pet data for um, ABCG8 and its nearby gene ABCG5. Uh, so it looks like, um, since we both have genetic data and physical chromatin um, contact data, that's most likely um, regulating this gene. And we can see this further if we go back to our page here. And we want to, uh, let me find it here, actually view this in the browser. We can search, for example, liver here. And we can pick the right lobe. And we can actually view this in the genome browser. So, which we'll load in a second. So, because UCSC is so bogged down sometimes, this is why Michael's been working really hard to incorporate the genome browser in screen itself. But we can see here, we have, um, 
We have um, on top, we have all of the uh, cell type uh, agnostic CREs. Then we have ones that are active specifically in liver along with the corresponding tissue. So we can see that this distal uh, CRE is, actually lies in the ABCGA gene, but it most likely contacts um, these two genes here, which have bidirectional promoters. So um, it appears that uh, biologically that this um, SNP would most likely affect the expression of both of these genes.